This is a poem for uh, both sets of my, my grandparents. Um, my mother grew up in Tokyo, and uh, 1945 is a year that's been popping up in my mind a lot the last couple years, so please excuse the repetition. Um, but here we go, this is called Teeth. Ojii-chan-ma is what I call my Japanese grandfather. In 1945, his Tokyo home was burned to the ground. Grampy is what I call my American grandfather. In 1945, he was serving on the USS Shangri-La, sending off American fighter pilots to burn down Japanese houses. Our jaws have not yet healed. 1906, Poland. Grampy's father is hiding in an oven. He has heard men singing on the street below. Hyenas, my family calls them. After drinks and song, the outside townspeople come into the Jewish ghetto for a celebration beating. Molar fireworks and eyelid explosions. Even when Grampy's father grows up, the sound of sudden song breaks his body into a sweat. Fear of joy is the darkest of captivities. 1975, Tokyo. My father, the long-haired student with a penchant for bad sexual innuendo, meets Reiko Hori, the well-dressed banker who forgets the choruses to her favorite songs. Twelve years later, they give birth to a lanky light bulb. 1999, my mother speaks to me in Japanese. Most days, I don't have the strength to ask her to translate the big words. We burn that house down, mother. Don't you remember? 1771, Prague. In the heart of the city is a Jewish cemetery, the only plot of land where Grampy's ancestors were allowed to be buried. When they ran out of room, they had no choice but to stack bodies one on top of the other. Now there are hills of tombs. Individual tombstones jutting out crooked, like valiant teeth emerging from a jaw left to rot. 1985, my parents' wedding. The two families sit together, smiling wider than they need to. Montague must be so happy we can capulet let this all go. 1997, from the safety of his Tokyo apartment, Ojichima scrawls postcards to his old four-poster bed. Haven't been able to sleep since you left. Wish you were here. 1999. I sit with Grampy's cousin. He is 91 and dressed in full uniform. I beg with him to untie the knots clenched in his forehead. He says, hate is a strong word, but it is the only strength that I have left. How am I to forgive the men that severed the trunk of my family tree and used its timber in the fireplaces of their own homes. 2010. Grampy and I sit together watching his favorite, baseball. In the infertile glow of the television, I see his face wet. Grampy sits in his wheelchair, mouth open, teeth gasping out of his gums like violent and valiant tombstones in a cemetery left to rot. The teeth sit, and I can still read them. William Chodos, killed at Auschwitz. Sarah Lee, killed at Dachau. Bill Kane, killed off the coast of Okinawa. I will never forget what happened to our family, Grampy. And he looks at me with the surprised innocence of a child struck for the first time. Philip, forgetting is the only gift I wish to give you. I've given away my eldest son trying to bury a hatred I can no longer burden. There are nights I'm kept awake by the birthday songs of children I never let live. A plague on both your houses. They have made worms meat of me. Thank you.